There is more money here than we could spend in 10 lifetimes. I certainly can't launder it. That's pretty realistic too. You're going to have to have a lot of small businesses to run through millions of dollars. Hi, I'm Jerry Williams, and I was a special agent with the FBI for 26 years. I investigated economic crime, financial fraud. I'm also the author of FBI Myths and Misconceptions, a manual for armchair detectives. Today, we're going to look at money laundering clips and movies and judge how realistic they are. Money Laundering 101. Say you come across a suitcase with five million bucks in it. What would you buy? A yacht? A mansion? A sports car? Now his Money Laundering 101 is a little right, but he has some things that are wrong. The IRS won't let you buy anything of value with it. The IRS will let you spend as much money as you have, but they want to know where you got it from. And they also want to make sure that they get their cut. So if a criminal or a bad guy goes in and wants to lay down, you know, a million dollars for a home, that is going to be reported to the IRS. I think it's called Form 8300. And if they're suspicious about the activity, it's also going to be reported to FinCEN. You got to age it up, crumple it, drag it through the dirt. You don't need to run it through a wash machine. But I guess if a criminal has some illegal source of money and it's coming in brand new crisp bills and he's trying to you know, pretend that it's part of his normal revenue from a business, I guess he would want to make it look like it has been handled. But I've never heard of that before. Next, you need a cash business. This clip is very realistic. Strip clubs and casinos, restaurants and bars, any type of business where cash is being used and transacted are just the perfect kind of businesses to do money laundering. That mixture goes from an American bank to a bank from any country that doesn't have to listen to the IRS. It then goes into a standard checking account and voila. All you need is access to one of over 3 million terminals because your work is done. Well, your work is done once the money is in the banking system. It doesn't need to be sent anywhere else. It's now, you know, clean, legitimate money. The only thing that he doesn't talk about is the fact that when you deposit that money, if it's over $10,000, you have to fill out what is called a CTR, or a Currency Transaction Report. And this is required of any bank. And of course, on that form, you have to indicate where the money came from. I would give this clip about a seven out of 10. I think they got a lot of it right about the general basic part of money laundering. And Gotcha had the most successful emerald mine of all time. He would inject bad stones with oil to make them shiny and have his friends in Miami buy the emeralds with drug money and give them as gifts to hookers in town. And this is another example of money laundering. If no one is looking to to put a value on those gems or diamonds or whatever that you're exchanging for cash to legitimize your illegal funds, then, you know, on paper, it appears that a legal transaction uh, has occurred. And that's what they did. This is very realistic and it's based on the truth. Drug dealers uh, in South America yeah, are, you know, did get to a point where they had so much money that they buried it. Rumor is, you know, the, that that money is still buried someplace and people are constantly searching to find it. They hid it in caletas, hiding places and walls and ceilings. I was involved in a search once. All of the cash was hidden in the floorboard of the van. It was pretty exciting to come across thousands and thousands of dollars, although tedious to have to count. I would give this clip a 10 out of 10. It's pretty authentic. There's been nobody that I'm aware of that has hidden as much you know, cash as Escobar has, and uh, he's legendary. I didn't know what else to do. I tried weighing it. I figured one bill of any denomination 
weighs a gram. There are 454 grams to a pound. Money is handled on a regular basis, especially in drug dealing. And so all of that is going to make the, the each particular bill weigh differently than it did when it was a nice, crisp, clean, fresh bill. So there, there's really no way of determining how much money is there just by weighing it. I just stack it up, keep it dry, spray it for silverfish. Most of the time, the money is just stored in a bag. I have heard so many times about drug dealers or you know criminals who have gathered money together and stored it in a place only to come back later to find out that it's water damaged, that it's rotting away, that it's been eaten by animals or insects. There is more money here than we could spend in 10 lifetimes. I certainly can't launder it, not with a hundred car washes. That's pretty realistic too. You're gonna have to have a lot of small businesses to run through millions of dollars. I think I'd give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's pretty realistic. The issue of having too much money to spend and the way it's being stored. Where does this check go? Montana Realty Company. This is the point where the money laundering occurs. It turns into money laundering, running it through a realty company. And so this is a pretty authentic part of the scene. I have heard of many businesses that have been used to as fronts for criminal activity. And it's kind of sweet and funny that many of them use the names of their spouses, their wives, or their children. Uh, it's kind of sweet until <laughs> the uh, federal government comes in and, and confiscates. Get him up! Get your hands up! Get your hands against the wall, turn around. Let your undercover agent or your informant get out of the scene before you come and make an arrest. There is no rush. You know the money's there, you know the transaction's been made, you have the camera, the video of everything. Put him up against the wall. You're under arrest for violation of the RICO statute. So he mentions RICO here. RICO is the Racketeering Influence Corrupt Organization Act. And it is used when you are investigating a large organization. You see that eye there on the clock? Say hi, honey. I think they could have done a better job. <laughs> <laughs> of disguising it. I would wonder if there was a camera being poked out of this clock. Most of the time I have hidden audio equipment on the cooperating witness or the undercover agent's person. You know, a beeper or in a cell phone or in a, uh, uh, a book. Many times lamps are used just because they're at the right height and uh, they're very effective uh, tools for hidden cameras. I would rate it about a seven or eight. I think it's pretty realistic when it comes to the exchange of funds. You know, I have problems with the fact that they're sitting there counting the money, you know, for hours on end. Let me ask you some work. What about her family, right? How would anybody think they're gonna get through the... <laughs> The security system at most airports with money like that strapped all over their body. Before we became much more security conscious, uh, here in the United States anyway, the TSA, you know, I would still think would have caught that. Nowadays, you're going to have to go through a body scanner as well as all your carry-on luggage. I mean, they all got Swiss passports, right? The woman and her family are what we would call money mules people that are being paid to transfer illegal sums. A money mule can also be paid just to open up bank accounts and then make those deposits and transfers in their own name on behalf of the criminal. It's very common that a criminal will ask a family member or a friend to do this, but they can also just pay you know, a stranger. I mean, she's got parents, she's got a brother. Right, brother's got a wife, that's five people, six, seven trips, boom. One of the things that really bothers me about this scene is that I know this particular case that this movie is made about, 
and it was an investment fraud. The money was already in the banking system. So I'm not even sure where all this cash came from. It was not a cash business. I hope this is a scene that is set for comedy because it's pure comedy. There are parts of the whole movie that are pretty good. I mean, it, it is based on a real case, but these scenes, not good at all. I would rate it as low as a one or a two. I can confirm that he left Sweden on a private jet that landed in Paris last week. Transferring funds from an account that she doesn't own into her own account. This is what people think about when they think about money laundering. But in fact, it's not money laundering. It's identity fraud. It's wire fraud. It's embezzlement. I have a number of accounts at Bank of Kronfeld Cayman Island. I'd like to transfer those accounts and convert them to bonds. Naturally, you have the clearing codes. Naturally. How many accounts will we be transferring? 30. Because of digital fingerprinting and facial recognition, I think it's becoming harder and harder to do identity fraud through disguises. So, you know, she's getting away with this, but the documentation, her passport and other, and other types of identification must be able to be verified. Who knows where fugitive financier Hans Eric Benestrom is? Here in this Caribbean island. Car now it's money laundering because she has taken funds and she has disguised and concealed them. She's taken money that was uh, in uh, the banking system and she's transferred those funds and converted them into bonds. Uh, how many of these would you like to convert for deposit? All 50 into five accounts. These counterfeit bonds, I, I, I assume they're counterfeit to a Swiss banker. So they're going to have to have the appropriate weight and the appropriate stamps and the appropriate official markings that these type of bonds would normally have. And it is a criminal act of the banker if they do not verify the identity of the person or if they believe that those funds were part of a criminal activity, the banker would not accept those funds and the bank because doing so would also be a criminal act. The things that you hear about Swiss bank secrecy has to do with once those funds have been legitimately deposited. But banking in Switzerland still works just like any other bank around the world. They still want to know who you are. I think that I would give it probably a 10 out of 10. You know the drill. Everybody gets a burn bag into it. You put anything with Barry Seal's face or name on it. Come on, boys, we gotta move. I can tell you watching this just makes me so happy. There are some agents in the FBI who would rather poke their eyes out with a stick than to have to go through documents and papers. Of course, now a lot of this stuff is gonna be online. This still goes on, but it's a lot easier, I would imagine, uh, to destroy evidence that's online than it is, you know, boxes and boxes of paper like this. Seal, DEA, back away from the truck with your hands in the air. I have been in many situations, especially during searches, where we come in and identify ourselves and immediately have to tell people to stop. ATF! Hey, Drop your weapon! Whoa, 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 whoa. DEA! Who are your guns? DEA, put your guns down! Okay, okay. Down. Everybody's cool. friends here! Now, if this particular case happened before the late 1980s, maybe something like this could happen, but it doesn't happen anymore. Not since they created what is called HIDA so that they can deconflict or prevent all of those agencies coming up on the same type of case together. You don't want to have any law enforcement agency or law enforcement officer or agent harmed because of friendly fire. So I would rate this movie clip about a five. The last half when we had all of these law enforcement agencies converging at the same time, no, that's not very realistic. A last minute addition to your catalog, lot number 277A, oil on canvas, signed by the artist, 
The Road to Damascus by Jonathan Graziosi. This part of the clip is, is pretty funny. Art is in the eyes of the beholder and it's harder for authorities to be able to determine what is the value of art. And unlike other businesses, the art dealer does not have to complete that uh, CTR like we talked about to let the IRS know that this transaction has been made. 50,000, anyone? No? Oh, well, too bad then. And money laundering doesn't usually occur at an auction like this. Each art in an auction would have a provenance where you know exactly who is the artist, how much this work of art has sold for before. It has a trail of how much it's worth, how much it's been valued in the past. We have $50,000. When you have a single purchaser, then that again is when the radar goes off that this might be in a suspicious uh, activity here. Quite a painting you have for yourself, sir. Thank you. Somebody at that level should be suspicious that a painting of that quality would sell for this amount. Now he's part of the conspiracy. And so uh, if I were able to give him any advice, I'd tell him this is the point where he needs to come clean to the FBI. I would rate this scene about a seven or an eight. I think they got a lot of the things right about using art and a money laundering scheme. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out the video above?